Hello class. In this video what I'm going to do is just for fun to show some Photoshop tools I'm going to make a path to my building because right now obviously you're standing out here and there's like no way to get there and it sort of looks nice but I think like just adding a path sort of looks good. And I'm going to show you it's going to be a, a combination of using some vector tools, uh, some distortion functions and some filters to make it look interesting. Uh, I'm going to try to do it all in one video so it might get a little long but again, those will be the steps if you're looking through it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my pen tool. And across the top, I don't even really care where it is. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little curvy path. And in reality, this is going to be so distorted here in the future. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I'm just going to make sort of an S sort of shape like that. And I'm going to make a new layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and right click and say stroke path. And I think pencils by default, but I'm going to go to brush just so I get a nice clear path and we can see it sort of made this black line over top of it. Um, and now I'm done with that sort of pen tool so I'm just going to hit delete a couple times to get rid of it and you can see I've got this black squishy S thing over top of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this tool just like that. And the way I did that is I went over this icon right here and I hit control on my keyboard and I clicked on that icon and it selected everything on that layer. Another quick selection tool. Now, But now this is obviously a very skinny path. Um, so I'm going to make it wider and to do that I'm going to go to select I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to go to expand I'm going to say something like it's probably going to be like 100 pixels or really even wider so uh, maybe like 150 or something I'm going to type in 150 and say OK we see this it now just bumps it out 150 so it's wider so it's starting to look more path shape now I'm going to choose a path color so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to start with a gray. You know, the great thing about Photoshop, I can always adjust it later, but I know black is too much. Actually, I'm probably going to go to the lighter side there. Say OK. And I'm going to fill the shape in, this gray color. So I'm going to go Edit, Fill. And I'm going to set this to foreground color and say OK. And we see I've got this big now gray sort of uh, swoosh coming through here, which is the beginning of the path. All right, so that's step one, sort of setting up the path. The next thing is to distort this into shape. And I'm going to do it with my transform tools, a couple of them. I'm going to start with uh, free transform and I'm going to just move the top of my path down. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shrink it first of all so it generally fits close in the shape. We can see already it's starting to work here uh, and I want to pull it off my page this way. Um, and so I'm just going to set it close to the bottom of the stairs here. Oops. It's, you know, I'll probably trim off the top of this so it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. So that's starting to look pretty good, but there's no perspective on this. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform while I'm still in here. I'm going to go to Perspective. And what I'm going to do is I can make the top skinnier by pushing this in. And I can make the bottom wider. And you're probably going to want to make it a lot wider by pulling it out like that. And then you can sort of adjust even the shape by moving it like this. I'm going to have the path go off this corner of my page like this here. And so I might even make it a little bit wider um, and sort of sort of adjust it. And when you get when you and you can go back and you can get, if you want to need to do scale again, rotate, you can keep going back to transform and changing them. But when you're ready, you you uh, you hit that button and it sets it. I'm going to do control D for deselect. I'm just going to come up and zoom in here and realize that I sort of need to chop, chop off this path as it extends. Uh, it's extending too far above uh, my sidewalk, so it fits in a little bit better there. And I can see it's actually now sort of on the corner, so maybe I'll just sort of move this over a little bit. It's still coming off the edge. And again, I don't care what happens once it's hanging off a picture. And I'll probably even trim this drawing up. Uh, more so. So let me just move this over to sort of the center of my building and sort of trim along that um, line there and, and put it there. Now I could come here too and say well now there's no grass there so I might have to delete the grass out of this area as well. All right, Just like that. And so now we've got a path but now it's not um, now it looks too flat right which is a problem with a lot of computer stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to go ahead and go up to this layer. I'm going to name it path so I know that's what it is. Path. Here we go. And I'm going to just go up to filter. 
And I could try noise. Noise might work, but what I really think I might go to is filter gallery. And if you don't see anything, um, make it smaller. You could hit this little minus sign. I actually can't because I'm gonna. It's where my video controls are right now, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'm gonna go up here, and I want to go to film grain. I like film grain because it's sort of even color tone. And I'm gonna play with this and just sort of make it grain. Uh, you know, like um, uh, concrete might have the sort of texture quality to it. And you can play with these settings to get what you want. Uh, intensity doesn't seem to be doing much, but I'm going to take it down to say around there. I'm going to say OK. And you can see even that adding that little bit of texture starts to make it look pretty good. And now the last, uh, well, you know what, I might try. Um, well, one of the things I need to do is I need to add grass now because it's having the same problem as this this thing had, right? So um, I could try taking my grass layer and just pulling it all the way to the top of that, but I might have an issue with some grass, um, you know, having up here it sort of disappeared. So I'm going to undo that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new grass layer, you know, a grass path layer. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did for that grass, which is use the clone stamp. Make sure all layers are set. Make sure you have have this set. Now up front the grass is going to be bigger, so I might take my my grass size bigger, and I'm going to press ALT to set my target and and sort of paste on grass. I can probably even go bigger with this. All right. Now for the interest of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and finish the grass because there's another video on grass that you can watch if you need more help there using clone step. I'm going to pause it. We'll come back and just look at some last things. All right, so I put all the grass in. I use a lot in bigger brushes sort of on the um, outboard side of this and I use smaller brushes and much more sparingly on the inside sort of surfaces of these and of course got smaller as I went back. Now the last thing I'm going to do is just add one last detail to this and I'm going to sort of double click on the path down here. I'm going to go to the path layer and double click on this and it just brings up some like sort of layer options. Uh, that you can do. And I'm going to add an inner shadow. And what I want to do is you want to set the angle somewhere so so you get a little bit of shadow on what I'm calling the inside faces. So it's going to be this side and this side. And if you have trouble seeing it, you can always change the distance and make it nice and big. Now, you wouldn't have that big of a shadow in, in real life, but you can sort of allow you to sort of adjust the shadow to sort of get uh, the elements where you want to. And then you can take this distance back down. Just to add that little bit of detail, it really makes it look like this path is set into the grass. And uh, I'm going to say OK with that. Of course, you can continue to do things. You could, like, I might say, well, you know what, this is looking a little bright. Maybe I need to go to adjust uh, my colors a little bit. I can make it a little darker. I can play with brightness contrast. Uh, I can do various other things that I want. Actually, that seems too light to me now, so I might go in brightness and you know change that up, I, you know something like that. And say, okay, there we go. You can play with it. I, I'm not going to take the time. Sometimes I'll I'll put joint lines in it because concrete might be you know jointed on that. Those little details they can really add a lot. And just to, the, to do joint lines, I might make a new layer and sort of paint them on. You have to be careful because you have to start to pay attention to to sort of. Um, the angles and perspectives and, and the getting thinner lines and, and such like that. But it can, if you want to take the time, it can be really quite effective. So there's some more stuff. We'll come back and we'll start adding other things like people and trees into this thing over a course of videos. Um, so I hope you're having fun.